Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the DAX all selected function. Now, the all selected function happens to be a little tricky, but hopefully by the end of this video, I'll clearly explain to you what does it do and how does the all selected function actually work. We'll actually begin with two parts. In the first part, I'll talk about the syntax. That means once you start writing all selected, what do you put inside of this? And the second part is the definition of the all selected. And later throughout the video, I'll keep uh, taking up examples and through the examples, I'll keep explaining uh, that how the all selected function actually works. All right, in terms of syntax, there are three ways in which you can write the all selected function. The first way is that in the all selected function, you end up writing one or more columns from the same table. So that's what you can do. The second way of writing the all selected function is that you write the full table inside the, of the all selected function, mention the full table name. And the third way of writing the all selected function is you write nothing inside of the all selected function, you actually leave it out as blank. Now, when you write the all selected function and when you commit to that, the output of the all selected function is not a single value, it's actually a table. That's one of the most important things that you have to remember is that the all selected function actually delivers you a table and not a single value. Now, let's just talk about the definition of the all selected function. That means what does it do? If I have to explain you the definition in the simplest way possible, here is what I will say. The all selected function has the ability to restore visible filters back to the filter context. I'll say it once again if that sounded a little bit tricky. The all selected function has the ability to restore all the visible values back to the filter context. Now, you may not understand by just listening to the definition. So what I have done is I have kind of taken out various examples and through those examples, you will understand what does it mean to restore visible values back to the filter context in terms of all selected. Let's just go explore a few examples and let's just explore the all selected function. All right, here is a small example through which I would like to explain the all selected. But before we take a look at the example, let's just try to understand the data model that I'm working on. So in terms of the uh, tables, we have the sales table, we have the products and the calendar. These two are the dimensions table, that's the fact table. The sales table is actually linked with the products table using the product key column, which is a one to many relationship. The sales table is actually linked with the calendar table using the date column. There is also a total sales measure that I have created, which is nothing but the sum of the amount column in the sales table. And once I have built this relationships, I am then kind of using this pivot table, which is where I have the year, then I have the category. On the category, I have placed another slicer, which is where I'm restricting to only two categories. And then the total sales is right here. Now, this is all simple and you probably understand that. But let's just take a look at how the all selected is going to work if I write the all selected on the category column. So I have already done that. I'm just going to show it to you now. And that's the measure that I have written. So in the measure, I'm saying, hey, calculate total sales, all selected products and the category. Now, if you remember the way that we write all selected, one of the syntax, which is legit, is that you mention a column column of a table. You can write more columns of the table as well, but they all should be from the same table. And category happens to be a column of the products table. And that's what I have written. I'm going to drag this measure to my pivot table and let's just see what happens. So I'm just going to drag it right here. And let's just try to maybe investigate one, this number, which is 96, 52, 812. Now, if I just kind of recall the definition of the all selected function, what I said was the all selected function actually takes a look at all the visible values and then restores them back onto the current filter context. Now, if you actually take a look at the all selected function, all the visible values in the category column, which is the input, are actually two visible values, uh, which is actually accessories and bikes, both. So what this is going to do is this is actually going to restore both accessories and bikes on to the current filter context. So if you just take a look at the filter context here, the filter context is year equals to 2003, which is uh, this one and the category equals to accessories. That's just one category, but the all selected function actually finds two categories visible, which is bikes and accessories, and will cancel out this particular filter, which is the single category accessories, and then will restore back both the filters back onto this filter context. Now, what you see here is nothing but the total of the accessories and bikes. So you can see that 96, 52, 812, that's the number that you end up seeing here and here. Now against both of these values, accessories and bikes, the filter context, the visible, the two visible values are restored back onto the filter context. Now it doesn't really fiddle with the ear because ear is not something that you've actually mentioned inside of the all selected function, right? Now let's just kind of tweak this and let's just start to write the all selected function on two columns and not just one column. 
Here is another measure that I have actually written on two different columns, which is the category column as well as the color column of the products table. Now note that I can write two columns, but both these columns should happen to be from the same table and they are actually from the products table. Now let's just drag this new measure into my pivot table and let's just see what happens. So I'm just going to drag it and the results that I get are the same as the category column. The reason is why, because we don't have color being used anywhere in our pivot table or anywhere in the slicer so there are no colors visible now let's just see that what happens if I end up using the color column in my pivot table so I'm just actually going to go and take the color column and actually drop it into the rows of the pivot table underneath category and expand this pivot table let's just see what happens now if you actually take a look at a particular number maybe I'll just pick up a number from 2003 which is right here now if you take a look at this number and if we try to evaluate this number this number will we should actually show you visible values from two different columns remember the definition of the all selected function the all selected function actually restores the visible values back to the filter context that was the definition and let's just go explore which are the visible values coming from the two columns that we have mentioned inside of the all selected so if you actually take a look at the color column all of these values are visible that is one and the two categories that we have actually selected in the slicer are also visible that means accessories and bikes and all of these colors are visible so if you actually take a look at uh, this particular total which is the total of all the visible categories and all the visible colors which is actually this total this total is then or these filters are then restored back to every single filter context over here and that's the number that you end up seeing now note that it's again it's not going to fiddle with 2003 because 2003 is not in question that's the column from the calendar table and we're not really working on that now what we're going to do is we're going to apply another slicer on the color and let's just see what happens so i'm just going to maybe introduce a slicer and put it out on the color and let's just see what happens so i'm just going to pick up two colors let's say black and silver and let's just take a look at what happens and black also and if you now take a look at the new measure that we have just added now we have restricted or bent the filter and we are saying now only two colors are visible and two categories are visible which are the two inputs of the all selected function it's going to restore all the four filters back to the calculation and you will end up having the total for that so let's just take a look at any of the 2003 calculation we have accessories and bikes black and silver these both of them are visible to the all selected function it's going to take all of four of them and restore it back to every single filter here and what you see is the total here 5850 that's the number that you end up seeing right here now there is something going on with these numbers which is the evaluation of the previous measure that we wrote only on the category column and if you take a look at this this is 3806416 and if you are wondering why is this not the total of this let me just explain to you so if you take a look at this column remember that on this particular column we wrote the all selected function on only the category column we did not write the all selected on the black or the color it was only on the category column that means to this calculation the visible filters are accessories and bikes it's going to pass through the filter of the black it's going to pass through the filter of 2003 but it's actually not going to pass through the filter of accessories in terms of accessories it's going to show up both the values accessories and bikes so this is actually the total of all the black categories sold in 2003 that means that black and black if you add these two blacks here 3775 and 31000 here you will end up getting this number right here so if i actually just invert my pivot table and take the color on top of this and now if you take a look at this 2003 black is 3806 and that's the number that you were seeing it inside of the pivot table when the pivot table was a little inverted all right the other phenomena which is very very common while explaining the all selected function is shadow filter context now what exactly do you mean by a shadow filter context is what i will try to explain in the simplest form possible i am pretty sure that if you've come this far and if you've gotten everything that i have said so far you have already understood the meaning of shadow filter context but let's just kind of explore that explicitly so i have a very simple slicer here this slicer happens to be on the subcategory which is again a column of the products table subcategory is also dragged into my pivot table and against that I have total sales and I have written us uh, all selected function on the subcategory if you want to take a look at the measure right here that is the measure which is going up right here which is all selected on the products table subcategory column now what the all selected function is doing is what 
what you already have understood the all selected function is taking a look at all the visible subcategories so the visible subcategories are caps cleaners gloves and helmets all four of them are visible to all selected and what the all selected function is going to do is rather than just applying the filters for caps it's going to pick up all the four visible filters and reapply it back to the caps and the caps will not be the value for caps it will be the value for caps cleaners plus gloves plus helmets and that's the number that you end up seeing right here this phenomena of actually taking all the visible values which are visible to all selected and restoring it back to the current filter context is nothing but the shadow filter context that is what it means by shadow filter context all right next let's explore that if you end up writing the all selected function on a full table how does the behavior change now so far we have taken a look at all selected on a single column all selected on multiple columns and the meaning of the shadow filter context let's just take a look at the products table the behavior actually is the same all that i have done is mention the full products table now what is going to happen is that if you end up using any of the columns from the products table in any of the visuals slicers filters pivot tables any of the visuals it will go take a look at the all the columns used and how many visible values are there from any of those columns so so far in my pivot table i have category coming from the products table color coming from the products table and also slicers applied to that and if you just take a look all the visible values against this filter context are black and silver both the colors and accessories and clothing again both the categories so it will only let this filter pass by which is filter of 2003 it will not let the filter of black apply it will not let the filter of accessories apply but instead black and silver will apply both the colors and accessories and clothing will apply both the categories and you will get the total across all of these values which are mentioned right here ear doesn't matter because ear is not in the question of the all selected function right here and that is what you end up seeing all right we finally reached the last one which is where we see the behavior of all selected when you have no inputs inside of that now i am actually calculating total sales and all selected is blank now if i repeat the definition of all selected it restores all the visible values that it sees back to the filter context now it will actually check from all the columns that you have used inside of the dimensions or the visuals or the pivot table that how many values are visible and because you have no input it will take a look at all the columns and restore all of those values back to the individual filter context let's just take a look at one particular number and try to evaluate our output so let's just pick up this particular number so if you take a look at here any number that appears here in terms of filter context we have year equals 2001 category equals to accessory and color equals to black three filter context now the all selected will cancel all the three filter context and we'll take a look at all the visible filters so the visible filters are year equals to 2001 2002 2003 and 2004 because the all selected is blank is going to take a look at all the columns and the category equals to accessories and clothing and uh, color equals to bike and silver technically the total of the entire table so it's actually going to take the total of the entire table which is the total value of all the values which are there in the pivot table and it's going to actually display across this entire column so the all selected function well left out blank it's going to actually find out the visible values from all the columns in that that you've actually used in the pivot table or any of the visuals see the visible values of there and restore it back to the filter context all right the other thing that i'd like to talk about is that how can you use all selected as a table input so so far we have been using the all selected along with the calculate function to cancel the filter that is coming from the pivot table and override that filter with all the visible values that we are providing and calculate function has the ability to do that now remember that at the start of the video i told you that all selected function actually delivers you a table it doesn't deliver you a single value that means that we can actually use that in maybe a sumx function or something like that so i'm saying that go inside this all selected products category which is a single column that i have mentioned now if you take a look at this particular input right here the behavior of the all selected function is going to remain the same all selected function is going to take a look at the category and how many categories are visible so it finds out that accessories bikes and clothing all are visible although you have a filter for accessories right here it's going to cancel that filter it's going to say hey all the three are visible and it's going to actually go inside three rows the first row is accessories it's going to find the total sales which is this number then it's going to go to the next row it's going to find the next number which is 283 
then it's going to go to the next row which is going to be this row and then when it has calculated the sales numbers for each and every one of them it's actually going to sum it up which is nothing but the sum of the full table right here and that it actually presents it right here so you have the option of using all selected as a table input maybe inside of a sumx or you have the option of using the all selected along with the calculate function all right the last concept that i'd like to explain to you is a little bit of catch that i left out while i was explaining the shadow filter context and the best way to explain that is by creating a little bit of conflict in uh, what I'm doing on the screen. So take a look at the visual first. In terms of the visual in the slicer, I'm actually picking up three categories, right? So accessories, bikes, and clothing. Now with the definition that I've told you so far, the all selected should actually see three visible categories, which is accessories, bikes, and clothing. And then I'm creating a conflict inside of the formula. And inside of the formula, I'm actually creating a small table, which is all selected products category. It should see three visible values. But then I'm saying that, hey, don't see three values, just see clothing and just see accessories. And I'm wrapping that inside of the calculate table. Now, once this table is formed, I'm actually uh, picking up the categories that went inside of this table and combining the two categories. The output that I will see is whether it should have three categories, which is all accessories, bikes and clothing, or it'll just have two categories, clothing and accessories is something that we'll have to figure it out. So let's just drag this particular visual to our pivot table and let's just see what we get. So we end up getting only two categories, clothing and accessories, clothing and accessories, and that's what we end up getting. Now the reason is that the calculate table has the ability to modify any of the filters which are coming from your visuals, right? That calculate function also has that, calculate table also has that. And remember that the all selected function is going to see all the visible values from the closest filter that it has. The closest filter to the all selected function is this one, which is clothing and accessories. It ends up seeing two visible values and that's what it kind of presents it right here. All right, those were my two cents about the all selected function. If I have to summarize the entire things that we have done real quick, there are just two things that I would like you to remember. The first one is the syntax. You can write a column, two columns from the same table. You can write a table or you can leave it out as blank and the behavior of the all selected function, which is where it takes a look at all the visible values and then it restores the visible values back to the current filter context, right? I hope you've taken a look at the video and I have been able to clearly explain the behavior of how the all selected actually works. Now, if you're interested to learn DAX right from scratch and bring it up to a level where you start solving your own business problems confidently, I highly, highly recommend that you take a look at my DAX course. It has all the elements of the functions, practical business problems and the fundamental and a whole lot of other things that are there to help you master DAX. That's all about it. Let me know, of course, if you have any questions around this and I'll be very happy to answer. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.